is Rebecca Schissel Marshall with Whole Body Upgrade, a podcast to help you get unstuck, feel better, and have more energy. Let's get started. Welcome, welcome to episode two of Whole Body Upgrade. This is five steps to spotting stuckness. We're going to talk a little bit about stuckness today. And you might be asking, what is stuckness? <laughs> this is one of those terms that I hear a lot with the women who come to me, sometimes men too, but I hear it a lot more from women. They come to me complaining of being stuck. They feel like there's something that's not quite right, but they can't quite put their finger on it. Sometimes people will say, I know I need to do something different, but I'm not really sure what that is. Or I know I want something different, but I don't know how. Or I've tried, uh, here's a very common one, I've tried going to the doctor, uh, several doctors, and I know there's something not quite right with my health, but I don't know what it is. My doctor tells me that everything's fine, that um, all my tests come back regular, positive, normal, um, and yet I don't feel right. There's something that just doesn't feel right. So sometimes um, this can be in lots of different ways, right? So I've always already kind of alluded to this. This can be that the body, there's something that feels wrong with the body. Um, for many years, actually, I had, um, I was losing larger and larger handfuls of hair. And I went to see several specialists asking, you know, what in the world is going on? And many of them just chalked it up to uh, hormone differences after having my children and um, completing nursing, that maybe it was just a change in, in that, or um, just hormone differences from being older, or stress, or, you know, there were a lot of postulations that came about, and basically all of them were, I'm so sorry, you're going to have to live with this. And there was something for me that didn't ring true in that. I didn't, you know, I'm kind of stubborn. Um, I didn't believe that there wasn't anything. It felt like there was something that could be shifted, that could be changed. So I felt stuck in that. I felt like there could be a better way. That there, you know, in fact, the phrase I kept going is there has to be a better way. There has to be another way. Um, sometimes women will come to me and they'll complain of feeling not quite whole that there's something missing, and yet they don't really know what that thing is. They just know that there's something missing or feeling dissatisfied. They can't really put their finger on it. Everything looks right on the page. You know, I've, I've checked off all the boxes that should make me quote unquote happy, and yet, and yet I'm not happy. Um, or another example, a lot of women will come to me in, in their business as well, where they're feeling stuck in their business. They know they want to have their business grow. They know that there's something that isn't letting them move forward or they don't feel motivated or energized. That's another great example of stuckness. So from those examples, you might have an inkling, have a little idea of what it feels like or what you might experience if you're feeling stuck. Those are just kind of some generalities, you know, not definitely a whole list. Sometimes people will also complain about depression or anxiety and being stuck in those and that the traditional methods have not necessarily worked for them. So spotting stuckness is you know, just an identification, a noticing of what is happening for you. And do you feel stuck? It could be stuck in a job, stuck in a relationship, 
stuck in your health, stuck in moving your business forward. There are so many different ways that stuckness can show up. And that's just really a term for feeling that something is off, feeling that something isn't quite right, but not knowing where to go, not knowing what to do. And that's a very common complaint that I see. So in the first episode, I talked a little bit about the five wellness bodies and the centered wellness framework. And so what I'm going to do is kind of put this stuckness that I was just describing in the framework of these five wellness bodies to help you spot the stuckness in these different areas. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to suspend any of the mind that says like, well, I already know this, this is how this happens, or the mind that says this is really complicated, I can't get this, just kind of set that aside. Notice that the, the mind can um, have lots of reactions and conversations and stories that may or may not be true, and that's okay. And just see if you can try this on. So let's talk a little bit about these five steps to spotting stuckness. What I'm going to do is take you through the five wellness bodies and just ask a few questions so that you can start to find out if maybe there is one set of these wisdom bodies, of these wellness bodies, one place, and you might hear me call them wisdom bodies in some places. I do um, slip back into, that's what I began calling them, but um, I've shifted to calling them wellness bodies. So, you know, first you might just ask yourself, do I feel stuck? Do I have that sense of stuckness, right? Overall, even not knowing where that might be. And you might already have like a a yes or no. I'm going to ask you to, to ask your body. And this is going to be a very important paradigm as we go through talking about this podcast in the way that I work is the body is really um, the place to go to for answers. The mind will want to chime in. I'm not stuck. That's beautiful. I have a beautiful house. I have beautiful children. I have a beautiful job. I get a paycheck. Everything is good. Yes. And you may still feel stuck. So notice that. Notice what the mind wants to say. Notice what the body feels. So this could be a sensation in the body. So let's get started with talking about these five steps to spotting stuckness. We're going to start first with a physical wellness body, the physical wellness body. So first, what I'd like you to do is notice the sensations in your body. So this might be foreign to you. I know that um, many people walk around very much living in their heads. And I will admit that this has been me for many, many years. And it's really, in fact, it's my default that I go back to mind, 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 thinking, thinking, thinking. I think I'm fine. How do I think? I'm going to figure this out. (laughs) And not being in my body. Uh, Yoga was one of the very first places that taught me like, oh, there is a, a large amount of wisdom living in my body and then learning about coaching and the particular method of coaching that I learned and the connection of the mind and the body really cemented this, that the body has so much information. So what do I mean by notice the sensations in your body? Well, as I'm talking about this, you might notice that there's a tightening in your chest or that you have tension in a certain location, maybe in your jaw or in your belly. Just notice what's here right now and see if you can do this without judgment. And what I mean by without judgment (laughs) means like you may notice the, the, a critical voice that comes in that says, no, 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 no. Or why can't you do this? Or, oh my gosh, tension in my jaw. This is horrible. And all of that is judgment. If you just are noticing, you might notice, huh, well, isn't that interesting? There's a curiosity to it. So isn't that interesting that 
there's a tightness in my chest right now just listening to this. Just the idea of thinking about stuckness. Or maybe there's lightness or bubbling or a feeling of being pulled forward. You don't have to change or make anything go away, these sensations that arise. And if you aren't feeling anything, again, that's okay, right? We're just noticing what comes up. One thing you can try is just feeling the breath in your body. So as you breathe in, you might notice the breath as it feels at the edge of your nostrils or the belly rising and falling as you breathe. Just bring your awareness to those sensations. And as you notice that, as you're there feeling your body or noticing those sensations, like you just might make a note of it. Maybe it's even simply the sensation of a pain in your body, right? That's all part of noticing, okay? So far, so good. That's step one, the body, the physical body. Next, I'm going to ask you to turn your attention to the mental body, the mind, okay? So this is the second. This is the next step. This is the second wellness body. And in that same way that I was asking you to notice before, I'd love for you to notice what are you thinking? What are the thoughts that you're having? And it might be right now in this moment that you notice thoughts, or you might notice thoughts that come up as you go about your day, like, I can't do this, or Something's got to change. And I know right now, many of the people that I've worked with, friends that I have as well, that the mind is very active right now. Um, It is, we're in the middle of a global pandemic and the mind has a, a lot of activity. In fact, there's a lot of unrest in the world. There's political unrest, there's racial unrest, so the the mind has a lot to say right now. Notice what the mind is saying, and again, without judgment, that ability to be really interested in what's coming up without making a story about it. So as the mind activates as the mind is talking, we're just tuning into where the stuckness might be in that particular wellness body. So if this is challenging for you, again, it's totally fine. One of the things that is really helpful for me is writing it down. So if you're listening to this and you're driving or you're running or you're cleaning the house, all of those wonderful things that we might do as we multitask through the world, Take a moment later and maybe write down some of the thoughts that you had. Maybe the thought might be, I wish my yard looked like my neighbor's, right? It could be as simple as that. Just the thought I had the other day and I was like, well, isn't that interesting? (laughs) So that's the mental wisdom body, the mental wellness body. Let's go to the third wellness body, the emotional wellness body. For this, to look at in spotting stuckness, we're going to look at what emotions are present. What emotions are you feeling right now? And you might notice that certain emotions um, arise regularly, right? That there are certain ones that come up. Maybe right now you might notice that there's more sadness or grief. I hear a lot of people saying, I just want things to be the way they were. So maybe there's some grief about the shift in our current world situation. Or maybe there's anger. There's a a great deal, as I said. There's so much 
situational things that are happening that could bring about anger or fear. See if you can just notice those emotions and, and give yourself just a little bit of space to notice with gentle, loving curiosity, right? Isn't that interesting that I'm feeling fear? And again, we're not changing anything. We're not making it go away. We're just bringing our awareness to it. So we've gone through three wellness bodies, the physical body, the mental body, and the emotional body. And you may notice, you may have noticed already, and you may continue to notice that it's sometimes, often, they go together. So you may have a thought about the world is going to hell in a handbasket. And with that thought, <laughs> you might notice a tightness in your body. And there might be a deep sadness that arises with that. And that's the that's kind of the advanced stages that we'll go through. But just to bring your awareness that those things are supposed to go together. They do go together. So, so we have the physical, the mental, and the emotional body. And we've noticed what's happening in each of those. Now let's move on to the energetic body. And as I mentioned, if you haven't listened to the first episode, I would love for you to go back, listen to that first, because it's going to make a heck of a lot more sense. So the energetic body, the energy that we feel, right? This is um, a more shamanic and uh, energetic. Obviously, I also do Reiki and shamanism as well. This system is more going to be into feeling, not emotions, but like really getting a sense for what's happening around you or within you. So one way that you can pick up on stuckness in terms of energy is heaviness or lightness in your body. So if you could, almost like you were scanning your body, you might notice that there's a certain part that feels like, you know, uh, there's a rock in your belly. Or, again, going back to that tightness, you might notice a tightness. You might notice a sluggishness. It's very subtle. And again, it's not something that we've been trained on or taught in our society. So be gentle with yourself if you are struggling with feeling into this. At first, it, it might feel like sadness, but maybe there's not a situation necessarily tied to that emotion. So just see if you can feel, you know, for me, when I am working with clients, I use my hand and I go over individuals either in distance, so like in the 3D kind of a hologram sense, or, you know, above them. I don't usually touch the actual body when I'm doing this if it's in person. Um, but it almost feels like a different texture would, like a fabric texture would feel different, or I drag like that I'm going a certain speed with my hand, and then it slows down dramatically. So just notice that. And again, no judgment. There's no right or wrong. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing that has to be fixed or changed right now. We're just looking for places of stuckness. Some people for this will use the chakras, right, the seven chakras of, um, there's the that are located in different locations in your body. And that maybe would be another podcast that we'll go into, but really just moving up the different energy centers of the body. Maybe you feel um, at the base of your spine or below your belly button, above your belly button, in your heart, in your throat, um, in between kind of your eyebrows area or the top of your head that you might notice there's a different feeling. So that's the energetic wellness body. And the fifth one, the final one, is the spiritual wellness body. And so looking for stuckness in this wellness body is going to be more about feeling into, was there a time in my life that I had a difficult or challenging event that may have resulted into a part of yourself going into hiding? So this is, again, it's very subtle. It's not something we talk about in our traditional wellness or healthcare system. Wouldn't that be amazing if doctors asked that? Like, did you have a traumatic event as a child that can affect your physical, emotional, and mental well-being? Some do. Not all do, though. So 
think about the events in your life. I mean, it could even be, it doesn't have to be childhood. It could be a divorce. You know, I had several car accidents when I was younger. I had some, some really um, traumatic relationships in my early 20s. Noticing those events as they come up. And you can kind of ask yourself, did a part of me get placed somewhere else for safekeeping? Those are the five wellness bodies. And the practice of noticing where the stuckness may occur, those going through those five pieces or the five steps to noticing where stuckness may occur, where it can happen. Um, and you may notice that one of those might have felt more like, oh man, that's heavy, or oh, that's really, that one feels really important to me. And that would be one of the areas that would be addressed in wellness. Right, so just this idea of first that we are more than just one body, but also that these all interact, right? So that the spiritual wellness body, if we have a soul essence that is lost or in hiding, that that can affect our physical health, that that can affect our emotional well being, our mental well being, our energetic well being, that all of those are intricately linked. So even just having that perspective that health and wellness can come from a very different place than what we've been taught in our society. So this is part of why I find it so important to get this message out to people is that I think wellness is not what we've been taught. We've been taught wellness is you get your six to seven, eight hours of sleep. Six is not enough. Seven to eight hours of sleep. You drink enough water, you move your body, uh, and you, you know, you have a couple of vegetables and you should be good. But that's not the whole picture. And I'm here to tell you that this way of looking at things will dramatically affect a number of people because they're walking around with challenges in the other four wellness bodies and they don't know that there's a way to address them or that they interact. Those are your five steps to spotting wellness and to spotting where you can increase your wellness, to spotting the stuckness and to increasing the wellness, I'll say. So I would love to hear, did you try it? What did you notice? Did you see anything? I would just love to hear if you have had this perspective before and if you have um, had anything changed as a result of seeing this? You can leave comments. You can talk to me. You can you can contact me on my on my website or on Facebook or on Instagram. I'd love to hear what you notice. So those are some of the five steps to to spotting stuckness, and we'll talk more in the next episode. Take good care of yourself. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Whole Body Upgrade. If you'd like to learn more about working with me, you can visit me on Facebook or Instagram or on my website, centeredyou, that's centeredyou.com. See you on the next episode of Whole Body Upgrade. Thank you.